Hello and a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here on Sewing Street this Sunday morning. We have three hours live. We're going to be doing a little bit of demonstrations for you. Um, I'm going to make a pair of oven gloves, I've decided, in, in this hour. That was quite um, an impromptu decision because I just saw some gingham fabric and I thought, kitchen, we'll make something kitcheny. Um, in the second hour, I have Sally Ann and she's going to be doing a quilting demonstration with Liberty Fabrics. And then in the third hour, we've got some tools for you. Um, and then there will be another couple of hours of uh, already recorded sewing as well so we've got a whole Sunday morning of sewing and it's lovely to have your company so we're sewing street uh, we've been around since um, the 14th of February so we launched on on Valentine's Day this year so we're quite new um, but we are all things sewing we actually bring you 21 hours live of sewing products every single week which is quite a feat I think um, if you'd like to get in touch with us it'd be lovely to hear from you we have a Facebook page I have the page open on my phone now so so if you go to Visitor Posts on Sewing Street TV, um, that's where I am. So I can pick your, your messages up in the studio live. Um, or you can email us as well. So if you care to drop us an email to studio at sewingstreet.com, we can answer your questions and we can read your comments and have a look at your pictures as well, because it's always nice to see what you've been up to. So if you just want to come along and say hello this morning, then it'd be lovely to hear from you. If you do have any questions or anything that you'd like to share with us, then that's the email address to do so. Now, anything that you want to order, um, we do have a website and you can have a perusal if you wish at all the products that we have available for you and that's sewingstreet.com or you can order on the phone lines now we're down there at the bottom of the screen and that is a, a UK free phone line as well now because you've joined us very nice no there you go 0800 001 4433 is our phone number because you've joined us nice and early at eight o'clock in the morning we bring you every day what we're calling an early bird and that's a special offer price on an item that will last until it sells out or for the rest of the day and today we're looking at pins oh that's not terribly exciting is it look we've got boxes of pins i hear you say <laughs> these are really important tools pins are well, a lot of projects you can't sew without them, certainly if you're dressmaking. Um, you can never have too many pins, I don't think. And I do, I, I love flower head pins. I do like glass head pins though. Um, reason being, I can see them if I drop them on the floor. And although I don't normally iron over pins because you'll get little indentations in your project, um, if you do touch these with heat, then they're not going to melt. Plastic ones, of course, will do the stick to your iron. So that's what you've got, look loads of them for £5.98, two boxes full of pins. Um, I do have, I've got quite a few sewing areas and it's it's my job so that's my excuse, um, but I do have pin cushions in all of the areas. That's um, a bit self-indulgent I suppose, but it saves me walking from one room to another. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, do like, I do like to sit down. <laughs> But no, I, I do have lots and lots of pins and it's nice to have the different colours as well because you can see them not just when you drop them in the carpet um, but uh, against different patterns and colours of fabrics that you're using as well. So the, the little steel pins, 31 millimetres long, so they're just, just over an inch, almost an inch and a half in length and they're £5.98, you're saving £2 off the usual price. So if you're looking at your screen down here and it says £5.98 with £3.95 PMP all day. Personally, I think if all you're going to buy is your early bird pins, your postage at £3.95 is rather excessive. However, if you come back later on and you say, actually, I love that new fabric that you have, but you haven't seen that yet, place your order now, pay you £3.95, and then for the rest of the day you don't pay any more postage. So you can come back and order some more fabric, and we won't add postage to that order. You can go, oh, we've got the applique scissors for you. Um, if you think, I've missed out on those so many times, then pop those in your basket later on, no postage for that one. And then maybe think, I've, I've, I've got the pins, I need a pin cushion, I fancy one of those rose girl magnetic ones myself, then order that later on there won't be any more postage to pay and you can carry on ordering all the way through till midnight tonight without paying any extra postage so that puts a different spin on five pounds 98 for a couple of pots of pins and 3.95 postage it's all of a sudden makes it worthwhile doesn't it um, so if you'd like to order again um, on the phone lines are 800 001 4433 or of course on the website on 
sewingstreet.com. Just to mention if you're new to us, hello, good morning, welcome along. Um, when you go to our website, it'll come up as Jewellery Maker. If you go to sewingstreet.com, we're there on the landing page, you'll see a video and all the products underneath, and then you can shop the catalogue as well. But it will say Jewellery Maker on the website, so don't be concerned about that. Um, we're all part of the same company, and we're piggybacking off their website until we get our own, which is due this month. It's not, it's not, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, like a new studio, but we're working on a new website. I, I just thought if I put it out there, it's going to happen, isn't it? No, if I put it out, then I'm just probably in trouble. Um, so, something else that we have which sells incredibly well um, is the glue stick. This is, this is a stick of pins. It's not going to replace your pins completely, but it does the same job in a lot of cases. If we have time in the third hour, I might do a little zip insertion technique for you. And I would use my glue pen instead of pins on, on things like that. Um, with the zips particularly, I would normally, before these things were invented, um, pin in the zip and then hand tack the zip and then sew in the zip on the machine and then, oh, taking the pins out and then you go back and then you undo the tacking stitches and it's, it's like three processes to sew a zip in. Um, but the glue pen, you don't need to take it out. You'll run this down the edges of your zip, then you can sew straight through it. It's not going to gunk up your needle because it's been designed for fabric. It's bright blue in colour, um, but that will fade away to virtually nothing. You're not going to see it on the side of a zip anyway, and it washes out. If you are English paper piecing and you don't want to hand tack your uh, fabric around your paper pieces, then glue them. This is what it's been designed to do. If you're doing smaller pieces of applique and you just want to stick the edges down, glue it. It's easier than pinning. And this one is a very affordable price, I have to say, at £6.99. And it comes with a refill. And I can just show you how much... Oh, I can't show you. That's how much glue you're actually getting inside the pen. And then you're getting a spare one. A spare one as well for your six pounds and 99 pence we do sell out of these an awful lot though so if you've seen it before and you've missed out on previous occasions it might be a good idea to pop this into your basket now and again it's only six pounds 99 I use that I use these an awful lot of glue pens you'll find them very very useful so I'll have a look at that in more detail later on my thanks um, launched some thread for you yesterday this is Aurifil thread. I know a lot of you won't use anything else because of the quality. If it's, it's really important, no matter what you're sewing, to sew with a quality thread um, for two reasons. That means your seams are stronger. What's the point in spending all that money on your fabric and all of that time making your project if your seams are weak because your thread is cheap? And it also means less lint buildup inside your sewing machine, so it's less of a cleaning job. Um, so this is what Aurifil pride themselves on. You've got a really high quality thread and this is 100% cotton. A lot of quilters won't work with anything else but 100% cotton. And if you're dressmaking, I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't mind whether it's a polyester or a, a mix or a cotton. I tend to go for the colours that I like. So I don't mind using polyester thread on a cotton fabric, but if you prefer to have the right thread for the right fabric and you're sewing with natural fibres, then this is going to be the right um, the right uh, thread for you. There's 200 metres on each one of these and it's 50 weight, which is your universal, if you like. Um, threads for most of your projects and look at the colors they're rich they're like jewel colors and i like i like unusual colors just to keep in my stash because there's going to be one day when i've got a piece of fabric that's just got a flash of pink and i don't have the right color pink or it's just got a little bit of blue and i want to do some top stitching around a collar or a cuff or the flap of a bag and i want to pick up the turquoise on that i might want to do a repair on a on a school shirt if they ever go back again. So you've got your basic colours again, and I know a lot of them have, but um, it's going to be a while, isn't it, for a lot more of them. Um, and it's got a lovely sheen to it as well. So, and that, that's a good sign. It's like having really healthy, glossy hair, um, as in the shine means that there aren't the filaments there. It's really, really smooth. So you've got high quality, lots of thread. You're going to use these a lot, I think. They're really useful colours for £33.99. Pence. And these are in conjunction with Sewing Street, so they're not available anywhere else. 
So nice little combination for you. The Essential Collection, we're calling this one, and you can see what beautiful colours that we've put together with the help of Aurifil. So again, £33.99 for those. Only launched yesterday, so nice to have something new, isn't it? While we're talking about something new, got some new fabrics for you. This cotton canvas has, oh gosh, every time we bring you cotton canvas, whether it's the plain ones, whether it's new patterned ones, my word, it sells out. It's the most beautiful quality of fabric. It's, it's my best favourite one. There's so many things that I've been making with cotton canvas. It's perfect for bag making. I still do use my H640 or, or my Bosal foam on the back of it, um, but it's a really good, strong fabric. It's not see-through. Um, it is soft. I, did, I saw a comment on, um, on my Facebook page the other day. Somebody was asking, I've not heard of canvas before. Isn't canvas something that you paint on? That's what it conjures up. To me, it's a linen weight of cotton. I wouldn't have called it canvas. That's not down to us, that's down to the manufacturers. Um, I would have just called it, um, I don't know, a home deck weight cotton. A linen look type of fabric. It doesn't have a slub like linen does, but it has the same kind of weight and the same kind of drape. So for this, I would use it for home wires. I'd use it for curtain making. I would use it for um, cushion covers, for tablecloths. I could make a lightweight jacket. I could make a pair of trousers. That would be fun, maybe an elasticated waist pair of trousers with these. Um, I wouldn't use it for quilting, although you could do. It'd be very easy to hand quilt because of the weave. Um, but it's just a really lovely, look at that, strong fabric. Maybe you're covering seats for, in the garden for when the rain stops. <laughs> If it, we always complain, don't we? It's too hot, it's too cold, it's too wet. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite grateful for the rain at the moment because my lawn was going a bit brown. Um, so but if, you're, if you're inside sewing and uh, for the outside maybe, then this is going to be a great addition for you. I never buy one fabric on its own. There are very few projects where I'd, I'd just have one fabric even if it's a trim even if i'm making piping even if i'm making some bias binding there's normally two we don't even have 20 meters of this one so i would add to your order a red i may add to my order where's it gone i'm sure i saw a gold there we go uh maybe this one that would go really well so although this is predominantly is black in the background um, you can really make it pop. Maybe it's a floor cushion or a bean bag or something like that. But I would definitely add a little something extra to my order. Even the pale pinks, look, that just goes with anything. Um, this is going to sell out. So if you'd like to order, it's by the half metre at £5.99, which is a great price. And um, if you wanted more than half a metre, if you're going to, it'd be a small curtain now, I think, by the time um, you've checked out. <laughs> You probably only get half a metre left. But if you do want more than half a metre, order it quickly and um, it will come in one piece. So if you wanted a metre, order two units. If you wanted two metres, order four units. We've only got six metres left now. Oh, what are you going to make? Oh, I'd love to know. Um, I haven't even shown you the second colour and there's only six metres of this one left as well. Oh dear. Um, this seems to be the colour of the season. I don't care what Pantone is saying or what the magazines are saying are fashionable. Purely by sales of fabric on Sewing Street, I would say that this colour, ochre, mustard, however you call it, is the most popular colour that we bring you. So, but again, really busy. But you could still go for red. You actually, actually, look, 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 a navy would look really good with this one. If you wanted a really bright, fresh look, how about going for a cream? So I'm, I'm doing all your shopping for you this morning. The pale pink still goes with it. And of course, where is our ochre? I've put it down somewhere. How can you lose a piece of fabric when you don't even go anywhere? Do you know, actually, the ochre is probably the only one that I don't think matches. So go for a colour to go with it. If you've already bought your pins, remember, you're not paying postage when you order these. Um, so £5.99 for half a me. Actually, those two would go nicely with each other, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, but, we, but we haven't got many left. That would be a nice pattern matching exercise, wouldn't it? Because it's the same print. I love pattern matching. I, it's like... Um, to me, it's like when I'm English paper piecing, you do tiny stitches and then you turn your work over and you can't see them. You think, yes. 
And when you pattern match and you get that perfect match. So if I'm making a bag, I'd, I'd have the dark colour on the bottom and the light colour on the top. But when it looks like the print goes across the two colours, that's that yes moment for me. I really, really find that uh, rather rewarding. Um, OK, so that's your ochre. That's going to go as well. And we do have another canvas for you. This is pretty. Sunflowers, look at this. And again, it's not, it's not a quilting cotton, it's not a poplin, it's a heavy weight, home deck weight of fabric. Looks like watercolours, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Now it's still a heavy, a heavy weave. The background is actually printed to look like linen which is really clever. So it might look like it's on a calico or a, a burlap or a, a looser weave of fabric, but it's not, you can see there. It's a really good quality, strong fabric. Strong enough that if you wanted to use this for upholstery, you could do. I would quite happily cover a chair or a stool with this fabric, but it's still got a nice drape to it. So if you're doing matching blinds and curtains, then it's, it's going to hang really well. Um, and it's just really, really easy to work with. Oh, Hannah Producer has just said lining a wicker basket what a lovely idea that is because you know you, you can buy wicker baskets with linings already in them and they're quite expensive but you can buy wicker baskets without linings which are very inexpensive and then just make your own linings for them and that is very easy to do that may be a project maybe in a future show we should do something like that i've spotted a wicker basket in the corner of the studio Oh, was that us? Apparently, this is our storage wicker basket. It's this big. I see it, has, it has a sticker of its very own, and it stores random small things. <laughs> We've got, we have a lot of boxes all around the studio that you can't see. It's all at the back of the camera, and everything's very neatly labelled. So we've got our rulers, and we've got pressing things, and we've got storage things. And then things that don't fall into a particular category go into random small things. Oh, and random small things have a green spot on them as well, apparently. So we've got a bit, bit of elastic. We've got, got a glue pen. We have one English paper piece. We have got a packet of B buttons. We should, we should sell these. Um, oh, we have aeroplane buttons. No, we should sell the whole box. A box of random small things. Oh, I thought this was something personal. I don't know what John's been doing while I haven't been here, but he's, he's very pruned. Um, no, this is one of the, it's a stitch remover. I don't even know if you've got those in stock. Thank you. I just thought I'd share our random small things with you. <laughs> what, what is random and small is the amount of fabric that we've got left. See what I did there? <laughs> Slinky link. Um, so three new canvases for you today. Um, these are about to sell out with the, uh, the leaves. We have less than two metres of those. And then the sunflower, we've had loads of these. We, we like to have enough when we launch something new, but we, uh, we got that wrong. Um, we've got less than eight metres of sunflowers left now as well. Oh, a beach bag, a gardening bag. Um, somewhere to keep all your gardening tools, maybe a kneeling cushion with a little handle on the side would be nice. If you're doing something like that, uh, use a laminate on the bottom so the water doesn't damage it, so you can put it on damp grass there. So again, £5.99 is for half a metre. I think it's 112 wide. Oh no, it might be big, bigger than that. Is that 140 wide? It's quite wide, that one. And nice and easy to sew with as well. Oh, your conservatory is going to look so fresh and bright this summer, isn't it? Right, we have some more newness for you. So put those there, that one there, that one there, that one there. So, This is um, a gingham, and 
it's a proper gingham fabric but it's a heavy weight not as heavy as the canvas but it's a little bit heavier than your um, um, quilting cotton so it's, it's got a nice loose weave as well actually this would be really nice for smocking um, ne never never trust a printed check and never trust a printed stripe because you can't guarantee 100% that the check's going to be square and the stripe's going to be straight. This is woven. You can trust a woven stripe and you can trust a woven check so you know that this is going to be exactly square. So if you are using these as a guide for smocking, you don't have to put any markings on there. You can just simply join up the squares together. Maybe that's something that we could demonstrate. What can I do with smocking? I might have a play. We have, um, oh, we might not have any left. I'll have a play for next time. We'll do a, we'll do a little um, smocking demonstration just to show you some of the effects that you can create. This is the fabric that I'm going to use for my oven gloves because I thought it was, it looks nice and kitcheny, country kitchen kind of colour. Um, only three pounds ninety nine for half a metre, and um, it does come by the half metre. So if you needed more, then. Um, it does come into you in one piece. That's that's a really nice quality. I've got some um, check at home, which is very similar, but it's on a poplin, which is fine for dressmaking, but this is a little bit more sturdy. Not to the extent that I'd cover a chair with it, um, but if I am making homewares, then that's going to be fine. That'd make nice kitchen curtains, wouldn't it? So that's your pink. We've got other colors for you as well. Oh, and that's really wide too. That's, no, that's 112 wide. So it's a nice colour pink as well, that isn't it? It's nice and bright. The pale blue's nice. And these you can kind of mix together as well. So I'm in the bathroom now. Well, I'm not in the bathroom now. I'm I'm thinking about the bathroom now. <laughs> Oh, um, as in um, maybe a half, like you know, one of those cafe style curtains. Oh, I tell you what would look nice if you have um, the curtain um, on a pole with eyelets and get some really big white plastic eyelets. That would look really good across the top of there. I tell you what looks nice with um, with ginghams as well um, is uh, broderie anglaise. So you can actually buy, not from us I'm afraid, but you can buy like broderie anglaise gathered trim wouldn't that make a really sweet little skirt? So with an elasticated waist maybe and use a different colour check for um, pockets and put some lace across the top. You can make a little apron. Um, you can make a big apron with, uh, with half a metre. You could make a full size adult apron. Or what about a barbecue apron with nice deep pockets on the front? I was in the bathroom, wasn't I? Um, storage containers, a laundry bag to go on the back of your door. And oh, with a, um, you know, the, the piping that you can buy um, to make piping with. Some of it's really, really thick. You can get it about half an inch thick. So that'll give quite a nautical look. So you could put some eyelets around the top and then thread your rope through, tie a big knot in the end, and you've got a really nice nautical kind of feeling. So that's the pale blue. <laughs> I just love gingham. I think it just, it reminds me of, of summertime and a li little bit of school uniform. I used to have a pale blue school uniform um, but it's very country kitchen as well isn't it it's very traditional so red red I'm in the kitchen now and because this is the color that I'm going to make my oven gloves with but I could make a um, a tea cozy and my mug rug and my mug hug and a coffee a coffee pot cozy and Oh, so to go with my oven gloves, oh, I need a, I need a little cover for my toaster because I don't use it too often. I don't want to get in dusty. And then I can make some storage pods. Oh, and then it, I could use this in the sewing room. I could make a wall hanging and put some pockets on the front so I can store things in there as well. But I wouldn't use them in the check. I would go for the red of the canvas to go with that one. But, or you could go for a navy and do a little bit of red, white and blue. So again, that's three pounds and ninety nine pence is your price there. Half a meter in length, and it's one hundred and twelve centimeters wide, so just over a meter in width. Oh, I haven't finished. Have I? I've got yellow as well. That's a pretty color. I made a chicken shaped doorstop out of yellow gingham a few years ago, and that's it just springs to mind as soon as I see this. this is my my chicken doorstop. You could quilt with this. Um, I don't know if I'd want to sleep under it, um, but it would make a very pretty wall hanging or um, table dressings even. You could, oh, that's tablecloth. 
picnic blankets. But if you wanted to quilt or do a little bit of patchwork and make a, a table runner and placemats, that would... Oh, and if you are, by the way, we do have the thermal I'm on the show as well. So I could make matching placemats and table runner to go with my oven gloves that I'm going to make in a bit. So there's your yellow. And that's £3.99 again. There we go. Got any comments yet? Oh, oh, you got a problem with Sky more, right? I hope you're back now. We had a problem. Oh, yeah, we have. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Dawn's got in early. Get in early, Dawn. She didn't want to miss the show. Thank you. Come leave me a comment if you like. I'm on um, the Facebook page, not the fans page. I'm on the Sewing Street Facebook page and uh, go to visit a post. Or you can email us, of course, as well, just studio at sewingstreet.com. Okay, so that's those. That's everything new we have for you in this hour, isn't it? We're all up to date. Okay, should we make some oven gloves? I'm going to use a little bit of applique as well. So I'm pinching some of the red canvas and the red check. I'll move those out of the way. I'll move those out of the way. Early bird pins, 505. Just making myself some space. So what we have, just checking where the road to cutter is. The red cotton canvas goes perfectly with that check. And I will need 30 inches. Oh, that's just over half of it. So I'm gonna have loads left. I've got enough left that I can make a um, uh, I can make a bag, I can make a tea cosy, and I can make a peg bag. So I'm cutting off the selvage. Do we have new blades? Wow. So let's cut these two at the same time. I'm going to use, let's have a think about this. So there wasn't a plan. Um, open that up. Machine out of the way because it's quite a big piece. I'm going to cut them both at the same time. I'm going to have the red check on the top and the red plain underneath. And then the pockets I'm going to have in the plain red. It's not got a selvage, yes it has. We need to chop that selvage off. Take that off. Always take the selvage off before you start sewing, no matter what your project is, because it has a different weave, it's tighter. This is where the hooks go through on the on the end of the roll of fabric as it's being dyed and woven and everything. So it tends to be really tightly woven and it can twist when you're washing it. So and it doesn't always look very attractive either, so let's whip that off. So then we will have these two pieces together, so I'm cutting them both at the same time. And my long strip measures 30 inches by 8 inches. I'm going to use um, the red for bias binding as well, actually. We'll, have a, we'll do a bit of that later. There will be hand sewing involved, which takes a while, so I'm not going to actually finish this, just to warn you. So I'm using the 6 inch by 24 inch ruler because I find it the most useful size. And I'm trimming the edges of these off together so they're nice and straight. And I'm using the mat as well. Let me show you how that works. I was watching a demonstration on... Um, making bias binding on YouTube the other day, you know, just to see other people and what they do. And this lady had taken so long to draw, with a ruler and everything, to draw with a marking pen, diagonal lines, um, and then cut them with a pair of scissors. And I said, your, your, um, your board has got all of the lines on that you need. And if you've got, because she got a cutting mat, um, and then she got the ruler as well. So she had one of these and the cutting mat and drew with a pen. How time consuming is that? Trimming off the edge of here, I've got two layers of fabric and all I'm going to do is to line up, I'm going to go across this, that's, 
the red's a little bit short, I want to cut them both the same size. So I can arrange, in fact I could use that as a straight line because it is, because it's woven. We'll ignore that for a second. So I'm lining up my ruler against the marks on the mat. Because if I was just drawing a line across the fabric on its own, I could be doing this or that, and I wouldn't really know whether it was straight or not. So I know that the edge here is straight, because that's where I just cut it. Line this up with, we're going to go across this line here. I can't see where the line is under the fabric, so I'm using the board to line that up, which isn't quite right, it should be there. And then we can cut. And I'm just going to go through, I'm going to do that because I went wobbly. You probably saw that. And there we go. Now a gingham isn't a gingham if it's printed, remember. A gingham's only a gingham if it's woven. And again, you do get the exact... Let's pop that across there. The exact straight lines with the woven fabric. They can't help it. You can't get a wobbly line with woven fabric. So prints are very nice. But this is more reliable. Um, I don't want tape measure over here. So I want a 30 inches. That's not set in stone. If it's 29 and a half or 30 and a half, that doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go for 30 inches, which is here. And I need this to be eight inches deep. So again, I've got my straight line on my ruler. I, I would move that gingham around a bit so that it's straight. Um, I'll turn that over so it's the right way around. And I need eight inches, which is there. Fuchsia is the most popular of this uh, check fabric at the moment. Now along the side, I'm not cutting all of that off because that will waste it. So I might use that long strip across the top for my bias binding. But I can't see where the straight line here is. Well, I can because it's gingham, but pretend it's not. I can't see underneath here where the straight line is. So again, I'm going to use the ruler in conjunction with the mat. And I'm lining up all the squares on the ruler here against that line up there. So as long as these are all square, this is going to be square as well. And then we can cut. And then when I move this across... There's my straight line, so I don't need to use the board at all. I can just line up the ruler with that straight line and cut. And then that's bias binding. Right, what I need to do now is to round off the ends. That's not quite square. It's a bit of an odd angle trying to cut like this, to be honest. So I'm just going to make that straight because that's not quite. But that is. Right. We need something circular. Can we use it circular? <clears throat> Not quite big enough. We'll wing it. If you have an 8 inch plate, then that would be a perfect thing to use. So I'm just going to make the edges of this round. And then I'll fold this over so it matches on the other, on the other side. And then we are trying to get back onto Sky, by the way. But there again, if you're trying to watch on Sky and we're not there, you can't hear me, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry we're not there. <laughs> I need two 8-inch squares from each one of the fabrics to make the bits that the, um, my hands are going to go in. Um, so it was 8 inches. Out there. So again, I'm going to trim that off to make it square. I've got plenty to play with here. Eight 
eight inches up that way goes there. If you have a square ruler, of course, you can use that. Then eight inches this way is that. And another eight inches that way is that. Oops, get back. See how much quicker having the right tools are. I, I don't. I don't know how I used to manage, to be honest, before they invented rotary cutters, ruler, rulers and mats. I used them for so many different projects. Now I'm going to use this as a template over... Oh, that wasn't quite eight inches, was it? Is that too big then? I've done nine inches. Oh, OK. I'll trim that down. I'll trim that down. We're going to, get, we're going to do this right. So I need to trim an inch off this. See what I mean about the ruler? Can't do anything without the ruler. And you can do squares, you can do triangles. It's not just cutting straight lines with a ruler. Well, they are straight lines, I know. But if you're, if you're patchworking, then I'll need to reshape the end of that. Like so. Fold that back over so I've got the same shape at each end. So it's not any shorter, it's just a little bit narrower. Then we'll take the 8 inch squares and use this as a template to go around there. So it all works out. It's only a pair of oven gloves, I'm not walking the red carpet wearing them or anything like that. Although that would be very funny. Kind of thing that Lady Gaga would do, isn't it? Only hers would probably be made out of meat or something. We don't recommend you sew meat. <laughs> then we need our thermal oven. Oh, or shall we? I'm going to put a little bit of applique on here as well. So that's going to be the top of my glove. And then that is the top of the pocket. That's the top of the pocket. And I think it needs something on here. I'm going to use a little bit of check. I'm going to use my bonder web. So I'm just going to put a little heart on there because it's easy. If you do have a pattern or a shape, then why not put a, an apple or some, something like that on there? I think that would be that would be quite nice. Um, on the web. So I'll have one on each side. I've got smaller packets than these as well. You don't have to use the, the huge one. We have that size. And we'll have that ironed on the back of my fabric. Although gingham doesn't have a right or wrong side, to be honest. And hot iron. You can see when that's adhered because it goes a little bit clear. And let's cut that off. Um, I'll have two hearts. One for each side, and let's do these both together. So I'm just going to fold that in half and cut the heart shape around like this. And then, and there's my heart. So is that maybe a little bit big? No, I think that'll be fine. I'm just thinking when the bias binding goes around the edge, but I think that, that'll be good. And then let's scrape that off the back. I have a, a technique for you for drawing hearts if you can't do them freehand. Um, I'm looking for a piece of paper now. We have everything here apart from the one thing that you suddenly decide that you need. Oh, that, oh, that piece of paper. We have everything here. 
Um, I did that myself. Let me just show you this. You need a circle of some sort, so pincushion will do. And then I need a pen. Oh, got, I'll use the hemline one. So let's you fold your paper in half. And then take your circle, and these can be all different sizes, I have a clay, and I'm going to overlap my circle like so, and just draw around like that. And then take your ruler and draw a straight line down to the bottom. And then cut it out, so this is on the fold. And when you open it up, you've got a heart. So you can make them any size that you like, and if you extend the line down, you get one of those nice kind of Scandinavian long hearts. So don't worry if you don't have a heart template or you're not very good at, at drawing things freehand. So we'll take this off. So the glue's now on the back of those from your, um, from Bonderweb. Let's, oh, hanging hearts we've been up. We've got a, we have a book about that. Hanging hearts. It's a love to sew book from Search Press. And we'll iron that on. We're running out of time here, aren't we? I'm not going to sew around those then because that, that may take a while. I would at home definitely with oven gloves because they're going to go in the wash at some point. But I just wanted to put this whole thing together to show you. So a little bit of free motion embroidery would look rather smart. You could do a satin stitch. In fact, a blanket stitch I think would look really nice around those. Then, for my, mm, I'm going to use the red gingham to bind the top of the pockets and then I'll use the red um, canvas to to put bias binding around there. So I just need a strip of fabric two inches wide because a two inch wide strip of fabric will give you half inch wide bias binding. Although this isn't bias. Should we do it by this two bias? That'd be nice. It doesn't need to be biased because it's across the diagonal. See how I just make it up as I go, honestly. Right, so that needs to be at a 45 degree angle lady on YouTube who was measuring and marking and drawing and... <laughs> and I need it to be the same width as my pocket in one go. That will do. Then I'm going to flip this over because I'm right-handed. I'll use my ruler the right side up. And I need a two inch strip, so I'm not using the mat at this point, I'm just using the ruler. And cut. And again. That's a long strip, that's fine. There. Right. Let's make this into bias binding. I don't have a bias binder maker, but it's not too difficult without. So I need to fold the whole thing in half. Remember, I don't have a right or wrong side with this, which is easy to use. In half, that goes to the middle. Watch your fingers. And then I think that this fabric would benefit from a bit of um, um, spray starch or the, what's the one that we do? Best press because it's quite, I was going to say floppy, but flop, it's floppy in a good way. <laughs> Fold it in half again. And then, oh, and then we can sew that one on and do the same with this piece. Might have been a, a bit ambitious to make a whole pair of oven gloves in half an hour, but you get the idea. Actually, if I don't finish it completely, it gives me a chance to so that applique on properly, doesn't it? All right. So I go and press that 
and in half. Okay, that will do for now. The leaf cotton canvases, the new ones we brought you, have sold out now. We've got less than five metres of the sunflower one. So stop watching for a minute. I don't know why I'm waving to you. Again, stop watching for a minute and go and place your order if you want that. This is Thermalam. So it's a very densely um, kind of felted um, polyester wadding. And we do recommend that if you're going to use these anywhere around heat that you use two, two layers together. You won't need those on the pocket pieces. It's like snow there, didn't it? Um, because those are going on the top of your hand, so it's unlikely that those are going to come into contact with heat. But I'll use two pieces when I do the bottom piece there. So what I'm going to do here is to use a little bit of basting spray. Because although this is June Taylor's quilting basting spray, this fabric doesn't know whether I'm going to quilt it or not, so it really doesn't mind. It'll happen one day, won't it? Things will talk to you. Everything will be interactive. I'm not using that. That's quilting spray. I'm an oven glove, don't you know? Um, so that's going to go there. Well, that's nice and sticky. I've not used that before. That's a really nice strong one. And of course, I have a protective floor down here. I'm not spraying directly over the carpet, just in case anybody's watching. And using a well-ventilated room and all that kind of thing as well. Let's cut around here. Like so. And let's take that out because that's going to be blinding you, isn't it? Straight across the top. Across the top of this one. Might be quite nice as well. Oh, that would be nice. Oh, I better tell you what I'm thinking. Um, just to cross hatch quilt all the way across this. So just sewing literally in straight lines. After I do that after I've put the the padding on, so you get some some sinkage of stitches, which always looks nice, like a bit of sinkage. Bit of spray on the back of there, and then the back of the the pocket goes on. Line it up together, Deborah. That'll be fine, we'll trim that down later. And the same on this piece. Like so. so that's that and that's that. That'll be trimmed down later on. Um, then we'll sew the bias binding, or the binding, sorry, across the top. I'm going to do this all in one go. With all the way around the edge, I would hand sew one side. Um, but with this one being on the inside of the pocket, I don't, it doesn't really matter if the stitches don't match up on the wrong side. So I'm wrapping that around there. I'm, I'm going to use a couple of pins from the early bird. Or I could have, I actually could have used the glue stick. Oh, you get there. You pin that if you like. Just, <laughs> just, tr just trying to do it quickly. <laughs> and so. And like so. There we go. And or trim. This is looking so nice. I must say so myself. I'm so modest. I like what I do. So that's the one pocket. And I'll do the same on this side. So just wrap that around the edge. You can pin it, you can glue it, you can clip it, or you can just go freestyle. that around over we go like 
like so. Let's get a bin down here. It's so messy. Right, so we have... That's what we're going to look like. So plenty big enough room for my hands in there. I need to put my thermal lamp on the wrong side. Shall I, I, I shan't cut that out now because I think it's, I think you get it now, don't you? It's really quite, quite simple from now on. So the thermal lamp, two pieces, and that I would stick in between those two layers, the same as I did with the pockets on the end. And um, so basting spray, sandwich the two layers of thermal lamp in here, and then sew very close to the edge with a long stitch. So that's a tacking stitch, the longest stick up, stitch on your machine, really close to the edge. And that's going to help hold all of those layers together before we put the bind bias binding on. Also, what you can do at that stage, if you see like here, I've got that lining fabric has grown a little bit. So I can trim that back again, that's perfectly fine. You've got a woven fabric, so part of that will be cut on a bias, which means it's going to stretch a little bit. So that will go around there. And then I'd use the red, I think, just in the same way as I did with this. Now this does need to be cut on the bias because it's going around curves here. And I'd cut that into my two inch pieces, make it into bias binding, and that's what it's going to look like when it's finished. What I also would do before you finish anything here would be to cut a little scrap of fabric, a bit longer than that, about six inches long. Do the same as you do with the bias binding. So to the centre, to the centre, make a loop and sew that into the side there so you've got somewhere to hang it up as well. So a, a rather quick impromptu oven glove demonstration, but doesn't it look, it looks like something that you go into somewhere like John Lewis's or Dunelm or one of the home stores, Habitat or somewhere like that, the range, um, or the posh garden centres, yes. And that's the kind of thing that you're going to be able to buy. But to make that, what have we got? We have the, the sewing fleece at £5.99. And let me show you, when I find, what have I done with that now? What have I done with that? I was just going to show you how much you've got left. So you've got £5.99 for the... But I've lost it. Might have, might have dropped off the front. Honestly. How can you lose that? Um, so your thermal number £5.99. You'll have enough to make probably three of these. Uh, if you don't want to make three, you've got enough left to make you know, some placemats or a, um, a pot holder or a tea cosy or something else like that. And then you've got £3.99 for your gingham. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds altogether. And then I can't remember what the canvas was. Um, three ninety nine again. Is that three ninety nine? Oh, um, so that's fourteen pounds you're spending altogether. If you haven't got any bonder web already, then the bonder web. If you just go for the smaller packet, you've got enough for some applique like that, and that is two ninety nine. So that's fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen pounds. You'd probably pay ten pounds for a pair of oven gloves. You can make your oven gloves, your tea cosy, your mug rugs, um, your pot holders and have the satisfaction of making them everything to match in the fabrics of your choice um, for about £17. Plus your postage, but if you bought your pins already then there's no postage to pay on those. Um, and it's satisfying, isn't it? And it's so nice, you start making things up now, maybe even for Christmas, that you can say, I made you that. That was my lockdown project. That was the project when I first started learning how to sew on. I decided I'm not leaving the house for a few weeks, so I want a, a new skill, a new project, and it's relatively simple to do. I like for beginners um, to have a project that is useful or something that you can give away, that something that's satisfying, but something that is achievable that you can complete in a day. You can probably complete that in a couple of hours. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me just check on your comments. Um, we do have other um, cotton canvases on the website, by the way, so have a look there. Hi, Sam. She says, you're a whirlwind. <laughs> um, thank you, I think. Um, that's why I love this channel. The presenters are experts and demonstrate the products they're selling. You're brilliant. Oh, oh, carry on. <laughs> thank you. Um, 
Morning Jane, love watching the demos, inspires me every time. She's got a sewing machine ready. Can I use an old ironing board cover as the insulation? That is, uh, that, that's a fantastic um, thing to use. And in fact, you can buy, you know, the, the silver coloured fabric that goes over ironing boards. You can actually buy that. So if you wanted to make something heat resistant, you can use that. You, you'll find that if you buy a silver ironing board cover, it's a lot cheaper than buying the silver fabric by the metre. Um, there we are, that's everybody up to date, isn't it? Okay, so have a look on the website for all of the materials that we have here. We have a couple of cotton canvas bundles actually that are great value. So I'll give you those details. I'm gonna finish that later. I don't, I don't normally finish these things. I say I do and then I don't and they just end up. I know, at least I'm honest. Um, this is in neutral bundles. When we have a new studio, we're going to have so much room that everything isn't going to be piled up on top of each other. We're getting, we're getting our new studio this month. If I keep saying it, I'm going to walk in here one day and go, this is our new studio. It's an old garage. Anyway, it works. This is the neutral bundle. You've got two and a half metres in total. And if you wanted individual colours, they are all available by the half metre. So take a look at the website at sewingstreet.com. So in here you have your cream, a crew, silver grey, dark grey and the black. Half a metre of each brings you two and a half metres in total for £19.49, and pence, which is fabulous value. And then we have a pinks and purples bundle. When I get some studio, at the same time we get a new website. Um, then at the same time I can see pigs in the sky with wings. Um, we have the pink and the lilac and the lavender and the fuchsia and the coral. Again for nineteen pounds and forty nine pence. That's uh, they're one hundred and forty wide. All of these again are available by the half meter. So if you did want to match a particular colour. Go with that one. Can't can't sell you those together, can I? <gasps> but <laughs> they all go so well together, though, don't they? I've I've made um, a bag before now using I think it was the coral. The coral and the pink, which normally if I went into a shop, I wouldn't buy coral and pink together, but they do actually go. They're the same tones. And these are my three favourite colours. I think they're so classy. I think they look really expensive. So again, £19.49, they're not really expensive. And they are available individually as well. Now, if you've seen the quilt on the wall behind me here, this is Liberty Fabrics. And the pat the pat <laughs> The patterns that storage, um, the patterns actually come from a book that we're going to be featuring the next hour. And Sally Ann Harrison has very kindly made a video where she's explaining how to make up the quilt. So do stay with us for a bit of quilting in the next hour. If it's not your thing, skip on to 10 o'clock, join us back there again, because we've got lots of tools and may maybe doing a bit of zippage in that hour as well. So stay with us, go and put the kettle on for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll see you again after the break. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi there, welcome back again to Sewing Street. We're going to be um, throwing over to Sally Ann doing a little bit of quilting in just a second, but I need to take you through what she's using and to let you know that our back in stock glue pen is in, it's got a green spot on it because that goes in the random small things box. If you're not sure what we're talking about, have a look at the previous hour on YouTube. <laughs> TV secrets, this one. That doesn't apply to all channels. If you see something on another channel with a green spot, it could mean something completely different. But on Sewing Street, that means random small thing. At a random small price. This is £6.99. Um, I'll show you in the next hour how useful I think this is for um, fitting zips. But basically, it is a glue stick that has been designed for use with fabric. And because it's been designed for use with fabric, it washes out and it's not going to gunk up the needle on your sewing machine. You can sew straight through it. It'll hold things together while you're sewing it, basically, just like a pin would do, but it's a lot easier to use, whether you're putting zips in, a little bit of applique, if you just want to hold a seam open, if you're sewing something like uh, the PUs that we sell um, that won't press flat, they tend to bounce back, then just run a little bit of glue along the seam line and that'll help to keep the seam open. So six pounds nine includes the refill as well but just let you know it's a back in stock normally sells out so aren't you glad you're watching this morning so order on the website on sewingstreet.com or you can go to our phone lines which is 0800 001 4433 and welcome back if you're on sky we were talking about you while you weren't there this morning so again we better be polite now you're back again um we did have a few problems on sky this morning but you have obviously you haven't missed much you've missed much um, 
Only, it's only me. Um, but do have a look on YouTube. We, we try to put the pictures of the pictures. We try to put the, the videos of the shows on YouTube by the end of the day. So come back later on this afternoon on YouTube and take a look on our channel. Okay, this quilt behind me is beautiful, isn't it? And it's all Liberty Fabrics. Would you like to make one? This is what you're going to need. We've got two colour choices. So the fabric that you see here is this bundle. And I have a feeling you're going to have far too much. Um, so I'll just take you quickly through all of the different colours that you're going to receive. And then sally -Ann is going to demonstrate how to actually use them. It is a beautiful collection that just, they just go together so well. And I, I love a collection or a bundle like this because you know that everything has been designed to go together. So everything that you need for the quilt top for £72.49. And in Liberty, so these are all fat quarters, lots of. And then you've got two metres of, I have to say this is my favourite out of all of the Liberty fabrics. Um, I, I would, I'd love to make a blouse or something out of that. I, that's, that's my kind of fabric for dressmaking, I think it's lovely. Um, but this is a bundle for quilting. Um, so everything that you need to make the quilt top, you will need backing and you will need wadding. So have a look on our website for that. Um, then we have a second option. And again, amazing prices considering this is Liberty. Imagine what you pay for a Liberty quilt. Like that. So here we have deeper colours, richer colours. So more of the teals and the greens in this one. So these again are all your fat quarters. So you've got the same kind of prints but in different colours. All of the little bit of red in there. So you can mix and match with some of your own fabrics if you wanted this to stretch a little bit longer. What a lovely gift this would make, wouldn't it? It's a wedding present or a birthday present would be amazing. And then that's your, um, your border and your sashing fabric. And again, the £72.49, all Liberty fabric. And the actual project comes from quilted throws, bags and accessories. Oh, that's a nice bag. Let's have a quick flick through. So there's all of your um, diagrams, instructions, very clearly explained. Let's flip on to different kind of techniques. I should really flick through this in the right way, shouldn't I, from the start to the back. Those are nice colours. They look like Liberty, don't they? Um, so learning techniques, so I, I like books like this because you can learn something and then use that to go on to something else. So that's the project that we have for you here. Is that the right one? It's got a diamond in the middle. Yeah, we've got a turn square in the middle of ours, haven't we? Maybe it's, maybe it's a different one. Maybe she's, maybe sally -Ann's just popped another square in the centre. I think she might have done with that. Oh, that's a bit frou-frou, isn't it? <laughs> I say, ding dong. Yeah, that, that'll be the one. Salen's just put another square in the centre. But you can do that. It's nice to add your, your own little twist. I love mitered corners as well. It's the first thing I noticed with Salen's when I came in. Um, good mitering, sally -Ann. Um, it really gives you a really professional finish, I think, my turn the corners. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely design. I have a feeling she's going to tell us it's quite simple as well because it's predominantly squares. But we shall find out in just a second. Um, so £14.99 is for the book. Oh, just to let you know as well, um, you'll need the book for the pattern to make this quilt. If you just wanted to go for the bundles anyway, there is less than 20 of each of now those remaining. The teal particularly, we're down to seven of those. We've got seven, <laughs> seven bundles left. Um, so if you're going to order, in fact, if, if you think, oh, I'll just pop it in my basket, then watch the demonstration. Please don't, because when we get down to there's none left, your basket will suddenly start emptying through people who are checking out. It's, it works on all websites like that. It's just the way that it is. It may seem cruel, 
<laughs> but do go through to check out and pay for it and then you can sit back in the knowledge that this is going to be with you as soon as we can you've got yours and you're not missing out so 72 pounds 49 for the complete bundles and those are your two color choices and this is the book that you're going to need to go with it and um, shall we introduce you to sally ann and she'll take you through how you can make up the beautiful quilt like this one so here she is Hello everyone, I'm Sally Ann Harrison. I'm doing a demonstration today for Sewing Street TV. Um, we're going to make a four patch quilt like this one. Okay, this is simply a very simple, straightforward quilt made of four patches in such a, a lovely range of Liberty prints. It's got a square in square centre, which is optional, which I've made it a bit of a, as a bit of a design choice so that it fits with the fabric. And or you can just use an ordinary square in the centre and all the blocks around the outside edge are actually just four patches so it's very straightforward and then just to challenge you a little bit there's some mitres on the corners. So this lovely four patch quilt comes from this book Quilted Throws, Bags and Accessories. It's got some lovely um, mainly floral type designs in it and we are picking out the four patch quilts, which is here. So it's got a central block, which is surrounded by four patches. These blocks here are actually just four four patches, and these are two four patches and two plain blocks. What they've done in the kit is you've got a darker floral fabric which we're going to use for the centre which is this piece and then they've, we've used that darker fabric as you go out towards the edge so it's features in this block and also in the border itself and what I chose to do is to make my centre block into a, a square and a square block which is very easy to do so to start off with, I've cut the centre block, as they say in the instructions, at 10 inches square. And then I'm going to add some corners to make that square in a square effect, which is like this one. Like that. So it's a square in a square. The fabric pack that you get with this is some gorgeous the Winterbourne collection from Liberty Fabrics. It makes some absolutely wonderful um, floral type prints. That's what you're going to get. This is, I think, the teal selection. So, here they are. Lots of different coordinating print so all the hard work is done for you these will blend in your quilt beautifully now what I did is I took the lightest one out of the pack and actually cut the corners to go on the square and square so I'll move the book out of the way here's the lightest one give that one a little press and then we're going to cut the corners for the square and square. So this is optional. This is what I decided to do. You might just decide to keep it as a 10 inch square. So let's give it a little bit of a press. So I'm going to fold it in half. Give it a little bit of a press. It's up to you whether you want to use steam or you could use a little bit of spray starch at this stage. Entirely up to you. So I'm going to, I've folded the fat quarter in half and I'm going to line one, the fold up on one of the lines in the mat and then I'm going to straighten off an edge. So if I straighten off just here. So I'm using a 45mm rot rotary cutter. So you know, just move away from you. And then generally you would cut from left to right. I'm going to use the lines on my ruler to help me cut five and a quarter inch. 
inch squares. So I want four of those. are my corners if you are going to go for a square in a square and if you can see I'll just show you how they're going to go so you're going to sew them across this way so that they all I'm going to cut them off we'll sit on here like this As I say, that's optional, you don't have to do this, but that's what I did with, with my version. Okay. The other things you're gonna to need to cut out are the strips to make four patches. So to do this, I gathered together probably three or four of the back waters. If you just open them out and put the selvages together so that they're all lined up the same way. on top of each other. It's a little bit of a small area. Slide them across. take off that salvage. Again, I'm sort of using the lines in the mat to guide me. I mean, you could, if you wanted, cut lots of two and seven eight inch squares, which is what it suggests in the pattern, but you'll make it a lot easier if you cut lots of strips and then make them into four patches and I'll show you how to do that as we go through the process. So to cut a two and seven eight inch strip people sometimes get confused so basically if you go to three on your ruler and then just go back one little bite that is two and seven eighths. So you want a couple of strips from each back quarter. One strip and again go to the three, go back one bite, that's your two and seven eighths. So those are your strips that you're going to use to make your four patches. The final thing that you need to cut is your feature fabric, if you use what you had left over from the fat quarter, you need to cut the blocks which you need to cut the blocks that feature in here and those are 
five and a quarter inches each. So you just cut those out of the feature fabric. Let's move this out of the way. So again, give that a little press. You're going to want um, eight of those. And I think I just about got them out of the fat quarter rather than using the, lot, the um, yardage which comes with this. Which is for the mitered borders. Okay, so just cut a few of those just so you can see. Again, get it nice and flat. You would straight. So five and a quarter. You go over to the white lines and that. And then, because this is a little bit of a longer stripe, you see I'm going, I can use my hand to creep up as you go along. That's the safest way to, to do it. You would always, always cut away from yourself. So this is my five and a quarter inch strip. Turn it around the other way, neaten off the edge, which technically speaking I should have done the other way around, but we'll go with it. And then we work all the way along, lining up, not just the side line in your ruler, I'm also lining it up by the top, by the inch lines, so I'm keep making sure I'm keeping it square. Those are the beginnings of the larger blocks that pair with the four patches. In the next part of the video, I'll show you how to start sewing it together. So I've got a 10 inch background square and I've cut four five and a quarter cream colored squares. I'm gonna draw a line across the back of each one of them, just using an ordinary pencil. And it tends to work better if you go from the center out, across all of the back of them, across the diagonal. So you want to match it accurately with the edge of your square and I'm just going to sew along that pencil line using about a, a size 2 stitch. So come to the end and then do the same the other side. trim the block now. I'm using the ruler and just quarter of an inch from the sewn line. So I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay. Same 
same again. So you're going to cut away from yourself and line up on that line up on the line that you've stitched. And you want to cut a quarter of an inch away from that line. I don't usually cut sat down. I find it difficult to get enough pressure. Turn around and give it a quick press. That's your first two corners, and then you can see I've pressed them away from the center. So, all I did was simply set the seam and then pressed it away from the center. And I do the same the other way around. If you were worried that the darker fabric was gonna bleed through, you could press it the other way, it's entirely up to you. It's not gonna be a make or break decision. But either go press them all out or press them all in towards the center block. Again, on the pencil line. Same with the other one. There goes the pencil. And there is your center square and a square block. So we've already cut our strips from each of the fat quarters. They're approximately 20 inches long and two and seven eighths inches wide. And all we're gonna do is I'm gonna sew pairs of them together. Um, be careful that you don't get them all in the same order. So try and randomize it as you go. I cut um, roughly two strips from every fat quarter to give you some idea of how many you need to cut and I found that I think that gave me 96 squares which is the required number if you want to cut them out individually. I'm just using a quarter inch seam And then I would chain in the next one. So I would keep going and keep going. So here's the next pair.
the two that I've done. Let's remove those. And we'll, again, just going to go and press them. So I'm going to set the seam and then just press it towards the darker one for each piece. As you can see, they just pressed one side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through them. We're going to subcut them into two-inch units. So, let's put one of them to one side, and then give ourselves a straight edge to start off with. So, I would line it up on something on the mat, and then just cut off that edge. You're giving yourself a nice clean start and then use your ruler put the lines on your mat your ruler to actually cut your two and seven eighths inch units so on this ruler you can see they've got three those are the three inches and we go one bite back from three inches to cut the unit so that would be your first unit do a couple. So three, one bite back. One more. There's those three. Let's cut some from the other ones just so we've got a little bit of variety. So again, same system. Line it up with a line on your mat. Straighten off that edge. And then use your ruler to help you cut the two and seven eighth inch segments. So find your three inches and then just go one little pipe back. So we've now got some units that we can use to build. Sorry about that, crash the blocks. So all I'm going to do is take one of each and put them together so that the seams nest. So I don't know if you can see how they, so you almost, almost clip together in the middle. If you're a beginner, you might want to put a pin through that. And if you are, just put it a little bit further out so that you don't actually end up going over it. Use your quarter inch foot. And then just sew the two units together. And again, you can go through this and you can chain piece them. So swivel them so that they meet in the middle and they nest, pop in a pin, and then just sew along, again chaining, the chain piecing just means that you just keep going. And the advantage is that you're going to use less thread and you avoid that little wiggle that everybody seems to get at the beginning and end of their stitching. I'm just going to hold this one. Oh, 
it's got cool. So you need to make all together 24 of these to feature in your quilt. So I'm just going to give them a little press. Again, I would just set the seam, press them to one side, go through all of them in the same way. So that's how you make the 24 four patches that are needed for this quilt. Okay, so you've made some four patches and now you're going to be, is, begin to assemble them into larger blocks. So for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to focus on this area of the quilt here. Here are four four patches and that is one block. Here are the two four patches and two plain blocks and another one of four four patches. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assemble those. I'm hoping to assemble all that corner there of the quilt. So we'll start off with the four four patches that go together. So if you just take two, and I would take them and put them together so that they were seamed in the same way. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, so either the seams, the main seam, the final seam is running across or the final seams are running down the block in the same way. Things tend to fit together better that way. So if we start off by joining these two as a pair and again I'm looking to try and nest the seams if I can it's not always going to be possible but if you can that's going to be an advantage because you'll get a nice crisp middle then and also when you're assembling them if you look to make sure that you're not putting the same squares next to each other I've done that many a time so let's just pop a pin in the middle So I'm going to sew a few of these and again I'm going to chain piece them. So I need four pairs. So that's one. So again, main seam going across the middle and nesting them in the middle. In a pin and sewing quarter an inch all the way along. Nesting them. I'm chain piecing them through as we did before. side. Save me jumping up to the ironing board. Just gonna finger press these. Okay, so you've got your two pairs and you're gonna pop them together and I'm just going to finger press this in place. So I'm going to pop one seam one way, one seam the other way and nest them in the middle. Some of your other seams may not nest. If you can nest them, do. If you can't, well, you can. A few more pins in this one because it's a little bit longer. 
you want to nest everything that you can. Okay, pins again at right angles. Don't really want to sew over a pin, but you want to take it out if you can. Jumping up to the ironing board is a good little gadget to have. Just pressing the seam again to one side. And there you've got four or four patches all together to make one of your blocks. I'm just going to do exactly the same with the other one. Opening them out. Try not to match too much of the pattern. going to push one seam one way and one seam the other, nest it in the middle, and then nest these as well. quite well avoiding too many matching ones. So there's the second block. The other blocks are slightly different and we're going to make the block that goes here in the corner which is two four patches and two of the focal print. So in each case again I would look to make sure the seams are running in the same sort of direction as on the four by four blocks. I'm going to join that one to that one. Put a couple of pins in if you want. Or let's make sure this one doesn't go astray. we should look at where this is going to end up. It's always useful to have the, like, the book open or a guide in front of you so you can see where everything's going to land before you actually sew it. So I might want that to go that way, I think. So Lining it up. Remember, if your patchwork doesn't act exactly fit, you want to put the baggier piece on the bottom. Nobody's patchwork pieces ever fit exactly. Okay, there we go. Right, so I'm going to put one on top of the other, nest the seams, put a pin in, and perhaps a couple at the ends as well.
them a little. This one seam roller. And again, it's just to one side. I haven't pressed it open. There we go. Now we're ready to assemble the four patches of the quilt. So I'll need to move the book out of the way to do this. I should be able to get it in the shop. scissors as well. Okay, just about managed to get it in I think. And then finally this part which is the the middle block. So you're going to join in rows. So I'm just going to join this one to this one, and this one to this one and then we'll join the two rows together. And again I will try and nest the seams wherever I can. see what I'm using really very fine pins the finer the pin the less distortion you have in the fabric and they're really sharp as well line down. Now you want to try if you can to um, go through your quarter inch seam and if you can see and then straight into the apex of your square and square if you've done a square and square that is. So you're just going to make a really fine point there. Then let's do the same. to your four patches in two rows and now I'm going to join this one to this one the rows together and again I'm going to try and do that final bit of nesting and once again I'm going to try and get that seam right on top of the apex of the square and square. So it's a little bit fiddly, but I think it's worth it to sort of showcase the, the fabric that you're using. Because then it makes the focal point an actual flower rather than the whole piece of fabric. Okay, so there I've got one where I've got no choice but it's a seam on top of a seam and they're already going in that direction so it really is a case of just going with it. A bit of a chunkier pin. Okay.
there you have it. So in the next section, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to put on a mitered corner. So this is the corner of the quilt, just the top right hand corner. And all I've done so far, sorry, should I backtrack a bit? In the book, it gives you full details on how to do a mitered corner. Um, and if you follow it to the letter, you will end up with a perfect mitered corner. So I'm going to reiterate what they've done in the book. The first thing I've done is I've actually put a little tiny spot, a quarter of an inch in from the corner of the quilt top each way. This is going to be the pivot point for the mitered corner. I've cut my borders. These are the full length borders. I think they're 47 inches, um, which is what's recommended in the book, and they're six and a half inches wide. I've ironed them in half so that I've got a crease at the halfway point. And it's very important that you match the halfway point with the halfway point on your quilt. So I'm going to do that now. So the half, as I've only got half a quilt here, the halfway point's going to run down this line. So if I match that with that, we should be fine. So I'll just put some pins in. Go. So I'm going to pin all the way along here, perhaps not into the seam, all the way down into the corner, and then I'm going to sew. Let's get this out of the way. Like this. from the center point. Think the way the best way to do this. Ordinarily you'd sew all the way across from point to point. So let's just sew from point to middle. So you're just going to sew from that point. So I'm going to put my needle in just slightly off the point. And reverse it just with one back stitch. Can you see that it's moving just slightly? This is why it would potentially be better to sew from the middle to the outside pivot point rather than do it this way around. Um, as I say, I haven't got a whole quilt here, so. one border. Let's get the other one. Do the same on the other side. So if I was doing a full quilt I'd put opposite borders on first and then the other two borders on next. But as I'm only doing one corner, I'm going this way around and I'm matching the midpoints. few pins. Go right down into that corner. Don't want to lose it there. Final pin. Right, let's turn it this way around. And I'll sew along here using a quarter inch down to the pivot point. Flick that pin out. I don't know how far it goes in. Right, 
right, so you're getting close now to the, the pivot point that you made. So you just want to go you know, I'm just going to stop just slightly before the point and reverse. To get the pin. Okay, now you've got two pieces in situ ready to go. Take out that pin. What you want to do now is look at the quilt on an angle. So you want to fold it diagonally in half, which immediately opens up that point, that pivot point that you're you so carefully sewed to. Now, if you remember my borders, slightly walked, shall we say, when I started sewing them because I wasn't, because I was sewing from, a, from one end outwards rather than sewing from the middle. So mine are not going to exactly match. But as long as you, so you can feel, as long as you match the edges, you're gonna be okay. All the edges matched up. Get it nice and flat. And then all you're gonna do is draw a line that runs from the line of your quilt through your border and through your pivot point as well. And just reveal that. It's going to run from there. Try to use um, a white pencil. I don't know whether it will show enough on this fabric. Not the greatest. Let's try again. See how much I get out. just about enough line there. I'm going to sew on that line. I'm going to sew out from the pivot point to the outside edge along pencil line. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches. I'm not going right into that pivot point again. I'm just taking just shy of it. That gives you enough room to maneuver there. Try and stay on the line. Removing the pins. And don't have a big pair of scissors, so we'll have to Bear with me, I've only got a small pair. I'm just going to take off the seam allowance. Then we turn it over. Should have a perfect mitre going along. So I'm going to open this up and just give it a little bit of a finger press. So this is quite delicate because it's at a 45 degree bias angle. So top option is to not play with this too much and certainly don't get steam going all over it just to finger press it down. Neaten up that little area. There you go, it's your first mitered border. So you just proceed all the way around the rest of the quilt with four of those, and then you've finished your quilt top. As for different types of quilting, it's 
You could do some very straightforward quilting on this, which would look lovely, which would be just in the ditch, which is round every seam line. You could choose to free motion it completely, or you could free motion in the middle and just use some lines in the outside edge. Both would look equally gorgeous. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. Certainly did, thank you very much. Um, let me give you the details of the teal bundle, the Liberty Fabric bundle that was used in the demonstration there. Um, we have less than five of these remaining, so you've been busy ordering while you were watching the demonstration. Uh, for your £72.49, we have 11 fat quarter pieces. Remember, these are all Liberty. Beautifully coordinating. I love the richness of these colours. Um, and of course, with Liberty Fabrics, you know that you're going to get the quality of the fabrics as well. So those are your fat quarters and then you have your larger piece as well which you can use for um, for your borders and there's a couple of squares with that as well. All of that for £72.49. pence. We have the colour option which is behind me here with my favourite fabric which is the grey one. So these again are your 11 fat quarters. We don't even have 10 of these left now. Again at £72.49. Pretty colours, aren't they? But they're classic, they're never going to date. Um, I like that with the fabric. I like something that I know that in 10 years time I can look at my work and still enjoy it. And with quilts, unlike with clothing, they don't really go out of fashion, do they? But these are really beautiful, classic colours, classic designs. I love that one. I just think it's so elegant, so classy. Um, and again, £72.49 for all of those. And then, of course, the book where said project came from features 28 projects, including bags and, um, and other things in there as well. So it's not just all about the actual quilts. It's quilted bags. It's quilted throws and it's quilted accessories. So just have a quick flip through the selection. There's a little bit of piecing in here. Um, that is the, in fact, that's the quilt, isn't it? That's been made, have a look at that one. So we, we knew um, a lot of you already have the book, which is why the book isn't actually in the bundle, but you will need the book um, for all of your measurements and things like that. But we've got quilted bags and that's pretty floral hexagons, unusual fabrics, and the frou-frou bag. It, it reminds me of my grandma, as in she she really prided the, the, the coat that she had, and she used to wear brooches and things like that, and the coat with the fur collar, faux fur collar, I hope. Um, little pouch, so some smaller projects in there as well. That's pretty. So achievable projects, again, everything isn't a big quilt. There are things that you can make in a shorter space of time or things that you can kind of aspire to. So it can be a learning curve or for those that are a bit more experienced, then you've got um, a little bit more inspiration. If you've lost your quilting mojo, there's lots of um, ideas and inspiration in here. OK, so that's Quilted Throws, Bags and Accessories. That's £14.99. Have a look on the website for everything else that we've had in the show so far this morning. We are with you for another hour. So it's um, sewingstreet.com. While you're there, have a look at the Juki sewing machines that we have. You'll notice that in the demonstration, Juki was used, and that's one of the brands that we sell here on Sewing Street. Um, so do take a look at the selection that we have for you. That is an amazing machine. So we haven't actually got it here, but take a look on the website and you'll see all of the details that we have for you there. Right, we're going to take a quick break. We have lamps and we've got tools and we've got books and we're going to be doing a little bit of zippage in the next hour. So I'll see you again in oh, around about five minutes time. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket.
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello then, welcome back to Sewing Street. Now in this hour, or this 50 minutes, um, we're going to be looking at some tools, some which are essential and some which I think you're just going to find really, really useful. Um, one of the things that we really need to have a think about in our sewing group, well, there's a few things that aren't anything to do with your tools. It's where your table is, how you're sitting, the height of your chair when you're sewing, and of course, lighting. So not all of us are in the fortunate position of having wonderful daylight streaming through the windows and certainly not the kind of weather that we've had for a couple of days, it's been very grey. Um, so you may be relying on fluorescent lights or table lamps or wall lights, I have an issue with wall lights at the moment, um, or spotlights, um, which can be quite straining on the eye. So we've got solutions for you. So let's take a look first of all at our large lamp. Now this can be on the table, it can be on the floor, um, so it comes with an extra pole that you can just make the whole thing longer with. So you've got a, in fact I've got a picture on the box that I can show you so you can see what that looks like. 
So we just thought that if we if we put this all together, it'd be up here, and you wouldn't be able to see it anywhere. Um, but those are your two options. So you can either have it as a standard, or you can have it as a wall light. You can plug it into the mains if you wish, or it is rechargeable. So that means that you can have your lamp in areas that you don't that you can't put an extension lead to. Maybe it's even you're working in the garage or a shed outside or somewhere that doesn't have mains then this is going to be ideal for you i have these lights all over my sewing room not exactly the same ones to be honest because i've been working on my sewing room for a, a long time now or working in my sewing room for a long time now um but i think it's it's really important um it does it just kind of relax you a little bit more when you've got the right light. And these are the equivalent of a daylight bulb. They're long lasting, they're low energy, and they don't get hot. Which is really important because sometimes bulbs can get really hot and touch something and cause all kind of havoc. And it has a magnifier in there as well. Um, two times magnifying. It's got to be done, hasn't it? <laughs> It is a lamp as well, so it's, oh, we've got different settings on there, so just checking that's on, um, which cope with three colour spectrums, so just by, I'm not going to shine that right at you, but you can actually see the different colours of bulbs inside there as well. So really, really bright ones if you're colour matching, and it really does make a difference when you have, because a lot of um, your regular bulbs that you have in your home are quite warm, they're quite yellow, and it can affect how you perceive the colour of your fabrics and your threads, particularly if you're doing something like embroidery, if you're hand embroidering and you're following a pattern and you've got all of your different skeins of colours of threads, there would be nothing worse, would there, than um, finishing your project, then going outside and thinking, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look quite right, I've used the wrong colour there. Um, but the magnifier is particularly important to me. Um, even, even with my contacts in, I'm not too hot at threading needles. So this gives you a really close up of the needle that you're threading, as you can see, but I'll put my hand behind there. Um, but it's not just for sewing. Have you ever tried to read the small, I'll tell you what I can never read, the IMEI number on your phone. If you have a problem with your phone and you phone the, the phone people, they say, what's the, what's the number? I don't know. I can't even see it, can't even see it with a regular magnifying glass. These things tend to be tiny. Um, but this is a really strong magnifier. Um, I do you know what I find it useful for as well? Painting my nails. If you want to be really, really accurate, maybe you are a jewellery maker and you're threading tiny beads and you've got very small findings. If um, maybe it's model making. My, my dad was a, um, a model railway enthusiast. You don't play with model railways, you operate them. I used to ring around our house for years when I was a kid. Um, but he'd paint the LNER down the side of the trains with a paintbrush that had like two bristles on it. It was really, really fine work. Um, if there's somebody in your household that does that kind of thing, then this is going to be so useful for you. Um, so if, if you're cross-stitching, I've tried following cross-stitch patterns before now, and they, they look amazing. Well, mine didn't. Um, they should look amazing when they're finished, but the crosses were really, really tiny and I couldn't quite see them. With a magnifying glass, it's going to magnify. A lot. So even if you're if you're struggling reading that small print, look how much that's going to magnify. And it's easy to use as well. And although it can be a standard lamp, it's not too um, imposing in your room. It's not you know it's not right. It's not like one with a big lampshade on that you you can put this out of the way. And as it has um, the extended pole on there as well, if you wanted that behind your chair so you've got a really good light while you're reading in the evening, you can put this wherever you like. Do you travel? Or would you like to? You don't at the moment. You're not at the moment. Um, but <laughs> but in the, when we can get our motorhomes back on the road again, or maybe we can go to the caravan or we're going to go away to a, the cottage or wherever, you can have the light wherever you want it because it's rechargeable so you don't have to worry about the mains so again oh we don't have extra pmp even though this is quite large um so you've got your 395 postage all day remember and it's 73 pounds and 99 if you haven't used a daylight type of bulb before um try one just try it i think you can Personally, I find I can sew for longer, I can read for longer, I find there's less strain on my eyes and I get less tired. Lighting is so very important in whatever kind of area that you're working in, so, so give that a go. Um, and it's 
by having the different light levels and the magnification, you've got you've, you've got it all in one here. I think it's a fabulous product for £73.99 again. Now, we have been um, shopping around a little bit as we try to, just so that we know that we're bringing you a really good deal. And, um, you know, this isn't an amazing difference, to be honest, but you're going to be paying less here than you would do there. See, need a magnifying glass to read that. <laughs> but I can read £82.96 and that's the main thing, so we, we're less than that price there. But that price there, if you saw, was reduced from £103, so that's probably the kind of price that you'd expect to pay for something like this anyhow. So £73.99 is our price, which I think is great value. So we do have um, another lamp for you in the show as well, but these, it is really important this is rechargeable the smaller one that you're going to see in just a second isn't that does plug into the mains so let me just save the battery on that a little bit by switching it off where have you gone there you are oh you just tap it's fabulous <laughs> there we go um this is the the smaller option so if you don't have the space <laughs> i've plugged it in right down there so i can't move it um, inside here is your LED bulb. So again, it's a cool touch bulb. I have, this is a few years ago, you know the, um, the traditional style of, of um, desk lamps that have like the tube and then the, the half a dome shaped lampshade. Do you remember those? Well, like, like the first desk lamps, that, like little office lamps that, that came out. Similar shape to this, but quite old fashioned. I had one of those next to my, uh, and the monitor of my PC and it touched it and it melted it. Because the lampshade got so hot because of the type of bulb that was inside there. This is cool touch. So switch this on and show you. So we don't have a magnifier in here, but actually the bulb um, or the light that's emitted from this one is brighter than the standard. There you go. So again, natural daylight kind of effect. I'm not going to blind you, but you can see what's going on there. Um, and it's got a little tray in the base as well, so you can keep your pins and bits and bobs in there. I'll tell you where this is really useful. At the back of your sewing machine. I do have one at the back of my sewing machine because sewing machine lights are fine. So let's switch that off and show you. Look, got a nice, nice little are we on? That, that is switched on, so we've got a nice little glow from the bulb up here. But look at the light that you have. Look at the difference that makes. And it's not in the way, you can't even see it, look. It's not in the way as I'm sewing. <laughs> um, so it's not going to intrude on your fabric or anything. You can have it at the side, you could have it at the front if that's easier for you. But you'll just find it a lot easier to see. And when you've got a nice bright light as well, it, it seems to be easier to thread your needle if you don't have um, a needle threader. Um, bedside light, absolutely fine. And again, that isn't hot to touch. So if you do put this in a child's bedroom, you don't have to worry about um, coming into contact with it. Got little pen holders in there as well, which is quite nice. So a great office lamp. And you know, at, at just £16.99, again, what a difference that makes. But it does plug in. However, on the plug, was that the one with, the, I think we've got a USB cable on that. Oh, no, no, that was on the light box. Ignore me. Uh, <laughs> does, doesn't plug into the USB on that one. Um, but you, you can light up your, your displays. <laughs> you know, but at £16.99, I think it's, a, it's a, a great price, isn't it? And I like the way that you've got somewhere that you can just keep bits and bobs in there as well and keep yourself organised, put your pins in there maybe. Um, <laughs> £16.99 is your price there. And yes, I have been signing books with my Sharpie. You wonder what we do while we're playing videos. Not as in games, but the one that you just saw, the demonstration. Um, yeah, we sign books. Um, so 210 lumen. So you've got a nice bright bulb in, in there as well. And there's about 25,000 hours of light. So don't worry about changing the bulb or it wearing out or anything like that. You've got a, a long, long time before that's going to wear itself out, certainly. And it only takes three watts of energy. So it's a very, there you go, um, energy efficient, energy saving light there as well. Oh, now then, the rechargeable lamp. Um, we've got quite a few of these in, uh, in baskets. So please check out 
while we have the stock, we don't want you to be disappointed. This is the one, remember, that has the long pole as well. This is how it comes to you. So you get all of these bits as well. So the pole makes it a standard. So that, that goes in there and that goes in there, but then we go off the top of the set so you can't see it. Um, it is rechargeable, so you get getting your, your plug. And you've also got a clip, so if you wanted to, you can clip that onto the side of a table so you could use it. You don't need the base, basically, if clipping it is going to be easier for you. And it's got a nice soft grip rubber bit on the inside to, um, so it's not going to damage or scratch your table when you put it on there. I like the magnifying aspect, though. For any kind of, you know, I do a lot of um, smocking, um, hand sewing, tiny, tiny stitches, or I love English paper piecing. I love hand sewing in that way as well. So if your eyesight isn't too good, then you know that you've got something that um, is going to help you out there as well. Oh, actually, you know, it's not even when your eyesight starts going, is it? It's maybe in the evening time, or are you struggling to, um, to read purely because it's just not bright enough? You've got the brightness and you've got the magnification and there's, look at that, look how close that actually goes. Ooh, two times magnification. Just make sure, yeah, make sure my nails are painted okay before I do that. But any kind of hobbyist, you know, if you are making jewellery, if you have very tiny findings, um, if you're a model maker, if you're painting um, really intricate items, um, or if you are hand sewing, if you're knitting and crocheting, if you're hand sewing applique on something maybe, then I just find that is really, really useful. And remember, you've got your different levels of light there as well. So just by touching this, you can see the colours changing on the bulbs. And of course, all of that is explained in the booklet that comes along with it as well. Amazing. Now, talking about lights, something that you may not associate with a sewing channel is a light box. Oops. I use mine a lot. I use mine for transferring patterns. Um, love the size of this. It's kind of, it has different levels of light intensity as well. It's not heavy at all, so it's light to pick up and it's easy to store. And this isn't glass, so don't worry about that. It's a perspex. Um, we've got the measurements in centimetres around the edge as well, which is really helpful for some of your projects and this will charge either on the mains or from a USB as well and I'll show you how and when I use it in a couple of occasions. Um, not, not a fan of patterns in books. A lot of books have patterns in them. I'm not a fan of patterns that overlap each other because you have to trace them off but a lot of books do that as well. Let me turn that down a little bit. Um, so if I want to, I mean, this could be actually a page in a book that I, I don't want to cut into the book. Or here I've got um, an embroidery template, I've got a makeup pouch, all of these are overlapping. So if I cut out that handle holder, I'm cutting into this bit. Um, if I wanted to cut the side of the makeup bag, then I'm cutting into the body of the makeup bag. So these need to be traced off. If, you, if you've got a lot of patterns, buy or if you do this a lot or if you do applique a lot buy yourself um, a light box because otherwise you're going to take this over to the window and we've got little georgian windows so it's too big anyway and you'll be putting a piece of masking tape on there waiting for weeks for the sun to come out and then you'll be trying to trace off the top of it or how about on the monitor from your pc or over the tv you've got to wait for something bright to come on um, before you can trace it off and it's not ideal is it so let's pop this over here, let's put the light on. So the brighter the light, the clearer you're going to be able to see it. It might um, kind of glare a little bit here. So I can just about see this now. But if I wanted that to be a little bit shinier, I can increase the light settings quite a lot. So now I can trace off the pattern. Let's do the butterflies. I don't want to cut this up, I just want the pattern on there. And just trace around the edge. Obviously I'm not being terribly accurate with this, but you, you get the idea there. So I can trace this off really simply. The other thing that I kind of like to do 
with my light box is if I'm using um, applique pieces and I'm following a pattern for those or I need to cut out a few pieces all to the same shape. So like with the heart that I, I made earlier on, let's just draw a heart shape. The pen's running out. Do you know, a Sharpie will last for a thousand signatures. I didn't get them all done in the last hour. This is a piece of fabric that I'm going to use for applique. Um, so on the back of here, I've already put some heat and bond on the back. So let's pop this over the top. Now, considering I've got fabric and paper, let's take that really nice and bright. Now I can trace the shape off here. So I can do that as many times as I like, make the most of my fabric. And I've got exactly the same shape. I'd be hard pushed to do that without a light box. I, I'd, I would be holding it up to the window, which wouldn't be ideal. I'll tell you what we can also do. If I wanted to just take one of the little rabbits from here, maybe I want to make some applique in a contrast colour in exactly the same design. These are a little bit small for applique, but if this was a larger design, I can then take the pattern which is exactly the same, onto a different piece of fabric, to be honest, I wouldn't do the same again. So let's do a little flower in the middle of there. And I've got exactly the same shape there. I think I need to sign some more books. I've just been given another pen. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. So now I can transfer onto the back of my, let's do another one. Let's do a butterfly. Onto the back of my paper. We could do a butterfly with a bunny face or just go over those flowers there. So you can kind of fussy cut, so I can place these in exactly the right position. So I can have little flowers on each one of the wings and then just retrace that back on the fabric again. So then when I cut it out, you can see there I've placed it exactly where I need it to be. But I think it's, I think it's quite a shame, not a shame that you get patterns in books, but to cut this up. And the alternative is maybe to take it to a photocopier and just print out loads of them so you can cut them all out individually. But a light box just makes it so much easier to do that. Um, I, I design a lot of patterns and a light box is invaluable. If I'm making, so I'm making a bag and I'm going to join two pieces together like that. I'm making a bag with a flap that is this shape. Right, so that's the bag flap. Obviously I draw that with a proper template and a ruler. Um, but I want a pattern on the actual bag to be the same shape as the flap. So I'm going to put a seam around here and that'll be a separate pattern piece. So that'll be a cut two. But then to make sure I've got this in the right place, that goes over the top. I can draw around the edge here to where I want the seam to be more accurately and then maybe that can be the shape of the clutch bag. So that'll be cut two. And then I thought it might be quite nice to have some little bits in the corner here in a different colour. So I'm going to go back to not waste my paper here and I can actually draw the exact shape of my pattern pieces over the top. That one I want to be the other way around and I want it to be symmetrical. So in that case, I'll flip it over and I've got the second side here so that is exactly the same shape. So, so I've got those two pieces which would go in the bottom of my bag. And I can't think of any other way I could do that and piece all of the different layers together without having a light box to do it. Um, it's great if you're toy making as well. Well, anything that you're using to make a pattern. And it's A3 in size, so it's a nice big size there, but you will, you'll find that really, really useful. So I don't use mine every day, but I use it an awful lot, at, at least every week. Um, if you're foundation paper piecing, for folding back the layers, this is going to make it so much easier for you as well. Maybe you want to trace off that foundation, foundation paper pieced pattern and make several of them. Because once you use your foundation papers, you've sewn through it and you've torn it off. So you're not going to be able to reuse that one paper. But you can pop it on here and draw around it. Use your rulers. Don't use a rotary cutter. 
don't press on too hard, it's perspex, remember that's for safety reasons. Um, but you can then trace those off and you've got a really accurate cut. A3 in size, no extra PMP, £64.99 is your price there. But particularly for applique, I use mine an awful lot for applique just to make sure I've got all of those different sizes and, and different shapes all exactly the same when you repeat cutting them out. Useful, isn't it? Um, oh, we've had a message about the rechargeable lamp. That's Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Um, and she says, rechargeable lamp. You're right. Um, she says they are great if you get a power cut. Oh, I never even thought about that. Cheryl, <clears throat> excuse me, have you, have you got a rechargeable lamp and it came in useful when you had a power cut? Or have you had a power cut and thought, I just wish I had a rechargeable lamp? What a good idea. Oh, because we go to Campbell's and that's really not ideal, is it? We get a lot of power cuts. That's, that's such a good idea, Cheryl, thank you. Oh, talking about messages that came in. I had an email from, um, from Sue. So from Susan earlier on, um, thank you so much for e email and I and, and, and hope you're okay. Um, and she sent a picture of a lovely skirt that she made for her granddaughter as well. So just, just to say thank you for emailing in, it's really nice. If you'd like to drop us an email, it's studio at sewingstreet.com. And we're going to be live here for about the next 25 minutes. So if you wanted to email through in the show now, then it um, been nice to hear from you. Have you got a rechargeable lamp? We've got less than 10 of those remaining now. So that's going to go again. Remember, it can be a standard lamp, it can be a clip-on lamp, um, or it can be a table lamp. But the nice thing is you can have this as light wherever you want it. And again, if you if you haven't if you need light, maybe you're working on, on, under the bonnet in the car. Um, pop this on a table, a standard lamp at the side, straight straight over your engine. Um, it's going to illuminate the whole area really, really clearly. And remember, it's a daylight bulb. So it's going to be nice and easy on the eye as well. And it's just like kind of a, a touch. So if you're a hobbyist that's doing your hobbies in the evening time and the light's getting a little bit low, don't struggle with fluorescence and table lamps. Um, with this one, you've got the daylight effect. So it's going to be more calming and easier on the eye as well. And you've got the magnifier. So you're painting. Are you an oil painter? Are you a crafter? Are you a card maker? Are you doing um, oh, parchment crafts? Those tiny, tiny little snips with your little tiny curved scissors and uh, you need a really clear vision. It's nothing worse than straining your eyes. It's really squinting and trying to see those tiny little areas that you need to snip out. Um, what about um, Jane Greenoff's hard anger? I'd, I'd struggle to snip those threads and make sure it's only the right threads that I'm snipping. Um, so this just makes it a lot clearer for you. Even if it's the kids doing the homework in the evenings or the homeworks in the mornings at these days, isn't it? Homeworks all day. Um, it's going to be easier on the eye if you've got a daylight bulb rather than using fluorescent bulbs as well. And the colours are going to be more accurate too. So that's £73.99 but less than 10 left now so it's going to go. So uh, check out of your baskets please if you're ordering on the website. Um, oh now then. We've had the book that I showed you earlier on, on its own. We've brought you some offers with the Love to Sew books, um, a three for two offer, um, but that means that you've got to buy three books. So this is the first time we've actually bought you one of the Love to Sew books on their own, and this is Love to Sew Patchwork Bags. There's some really lovely ideas in here actually, you've already seen you've got patterns on the back as well. Um, but nice, simple, I love the colour choices of the, um, the fabrics too. So you've got a little messenger bag there, um, a little bit of patchwork, heavenly hexagons. There's something for your, I do keep your laptop in that one, a um, bit of hand sewing there as well, mobile phone cases, um, using frames, there's large bags and small bags. That's a really clever cosmetics case because it uses one half of a zip. I've actually made that one before now. Um, so you can just about see there, the zip goes all the way around the edge. It's quite clever. The only thing is you've got half a zip with no slider left over afterwards, but it's a, it's a clever idea. <laughs> so cosmetic, there is always, you can roll them up and make flowers out of them. So there's always a use for these things. Um, those are the butterflies that I was tracing off earlier on. 
Well, again, you can adapt these books. Oh, red gingham um, with, uh, with lace. I was saying earlier on how nice that looked. Have a look on the website. We've got red gingham, green, uh, no, not green, yellow, pink, and pale blue. So more cosmetic bags, all involving, yeah, we need green. <laughs> all involving patchwork of some description. Which is a nice introduction to patchwork without making a whole big quilt. So if it's, where is it on that one? Well, there we go, just a little bit on there. Really lovely book. Right, um, that's £7.99. The Love to Sew range of books from Search Press are um, simply explained books. That's ideal for projects for a beginner. Let's move these out of the way because I have promised you a little bit of zippage. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, using the glue pen that's back in stock again. So I've just, I just touched my phone and I was on Sewing Street um, posts just to see if anybody is communicating, which you're not. Well, Morag, Morag sent a message in. She's um, uh, brilliant to be back on the big screen because we had a, a sky problem this morning. Debbie, your inspiration, and I love watching you, and so does Hubby. That was nice, thank you. This is the pen that's back in stock. And it is a glue pen with a refill. Once you start using these, you're honestly, you're, you're not going to use anything else. You will become addicted to these. Um, where, was, where shall I put my zip? I've got my zip. I haven't got any fabric to put it in. I've got some red. So I was, I was going to do my oven gloves with that and then never quite got around to finishing them. I will take it home and finish it. I just need to take some more fabric home as well. Let us, I'll tell you what I should do. Let's kill two birds with one stone and what have we got there? The occasion bags, but I'll use one of the templates in here. I'm not going to make a whole bag, but there are quite a few backpacks in here that have um, zipped panels. Like that one, for instance. So it's, it's the panel that goes around the top here. That one's got a hand sewn in lining. If I find one with piping, then that's what I should show you how to do. That's that one. There's a couple with piping on the outside, like that one. So it's this zip panel here. I'm going to show you how to do. So I'll need two pieces of outer fabric and two pieces of lining. That's not going to work. We'll do them all in red. And there's quite a few of you with that rechargeable lamp in your baskets, by the way. We're getting close to selling it out, so could you check out of your baskets, please? Because we don't want you to miss out. We don't know when we're going to get those back in again. So there's my template. I will need a marking tool of some description like this one. <laughs> with the lid on the end so I don't lose it and I've got a zip panel on the fold so let's put the fabric on the fold place on fold I've got a nice straight edge there anyhow and I'm going to draw around here And I actually need two of these. Um, normally one would be in a lining and one would be in outer fabric. But I'll do the same with both colours for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, I've also got end panels which are here. Because the zip doesn't go all the way around the top of the bag. Well, it goes all the way around the top but not all the way down the sides. And I'll need another end panel for the inside there. And let's have a tab or two. Those don't need to be on fold. If, you, if you're making a, uh, a bag from the book, all of the different sections that you need are highlighted, so it makes it easy to understand. So let's cut out this.
That is such a lovely noise. Crunching of quality short scissors through fabric. Love it. So you can cut these with a rotary cutter if you wish, but because you've got all of your markings from the pattern, it is very simple if you don't have one just to cut out with scissors. But get a nice quality pair of scissors. Tell you what I did. I, I bought I bought a huge pair of scissors off, off Tinternet. Um, really big scissors. The blade's about that long, didn't measure them, for cutting large pieces of fabric because I just thought they'd be easier. And do you know what the problem is? I can't actually open my hand wide enough to get right down to the blade. It's, it's rendered them completely useless because they're, they're so big, I'd have to open them like that and, and I, I just can't do it. I don't know whether that's a design fault or if it's me having small hands or something, but because I just had yeah, big crunches like this as I'm going through the fabric and I'm having to do, ooh, ooh, waste of money. With the two zip pieces, I do need to cut them in half. They're not in half on the pattern because they are used for other things as well, but it does explain to you how to do that. So straight down the middle. That does need to be exactly down the centre. Then, oh no, we didn't need that on fold, sorry. I needed two of them, didn't I? Those are the end bits. So I need four of those. And then we need to put the zip in. Um, and I've got a blue zip because it's the only one I've got. So that goes there. That goes there. I like to put the glue on the zip, not on the fabric. And just spread it along there. Don't get it on the teeth or the coil of the zip. And put plenty on. You've got loads of glue in there. More. So at this point I'll be pinning like mad. And then right sides together. We pop this on here. Now don't sew straight away. You can still manoeuvre this around a little bit. It's not going to set solid. It's not super glue. Uh, let's move that down a little bit. But if you leave it for a few seconds, that will really stick enough to hold it in place. And that means normally, particularly if you're new to sewing, I'd suggest sewing one side of the zip first and then coming back and then sewing the other side. But because you're gluing them together, you can do this. So you can do both sides at the same time. Do you know, my zip's not quite long enough for that. I'm going to chop this down a little bit. You wouldn't do that at home. You'd get a longer zip. So let's put that in the centre. Just so that the zip pull and stoppers are out of the way. And then the second side can go straight on top. And then we can sew through both pieces at the same time. And again, don't worry about your um, the glue in the sewing machine. These have been designed for that purpose. I'm not putting the zipper foot on the machine because I don't need to. Because If you've got a computerised sewing machine, um, it'll have a stitch width and a straight stitch doesn't have a width. So when you press the button on the stitch width, it'll swing the needle over to one side or the other. So I can get really close. I'll just show you that from that angle. Um, I can get really close to the edge of the zip just by moving the needle like so and it'll beep when it's stopped. And then we're going to sew straight down the zip tape. So I'm going through all pieces at the same time. I'm not having to remove pins. I'm not having to tack by hand, first of all. I don't actually have to wash the fabric to get rid of the glue, which is one of the benefits of putting the glue on the zip. However, if you do see the glue when you turn this over, then, um, it will wash out, or you don't have to wash it even, just a damp cloth will do it. So now let's open that up and there's my zip.
like so. And then the second side will go on the opposite side here. Normally, in fact, let's do it. Let's give that a press. As we're plugged in, may as well. So press that away from the zip. Don't be too concerned about ironing over these nylon zips, but don't, don't hover for too long over the coils. So just a quick press. And then for this style of bag, I would normally top stitch just down the edge as well. If that's still lifting up a little bit and you want to hold it down, why not? A little drizzle of glue across there. Just hold that in place while you sew. And then onto the second side. So again, I, I prefer to glue onto the zip rather than the fabric because there's less chance of it being seen and then I really don't need to do a mop-up job. That goes on there. Need to chop that down again a bit. That will need cutting down a little bit more. As I said, with the if I was actually making a bag from the book, I would get the right length zip. Don't start chopping the the pattern pieces about actually your bag's not going to fit together. Patterns for anything that you're making like this, dressmaking, bag making, are a little bit like jigsaws. So all the pieces have been designed to fit together perfectly. So if you start chopping them up, they won't fit. That goes on the opposite side here. And again, normally I'd be pinning, I'd be tacking, I'd be taking pins out, I'd be sewing, I'd be taking out tacking stitches. So you're making it a much quicker process by doing it this way. And again, we'll sew all the way through all of those layers on the machine. And this is a little 550L, and have a look on the website for details of it. It's got 50 stitches, it's a speedy little compact machine, as you can see. And it's doing the job perfectly. Back with the iron. And press that open. And again, normally I would top stitch that. For, a bag, for this bag, you don't top stitch all of them. But for this one, a little bit of top stitching looks really nice. And then... Let's put a bit of glue down there just to hold that down while we do the rest of the procedure. The tabs on the end, I'm going to take that off now and I'm going to trim this back so it's nice and neat. Let's trim that off so it all fits together. With this one, I'm going to sew the zip closed because I don't want it to move when I put the, the panel on the end. So let's take that down. Um, Susan sent a message in. Hi, Susan. And she says, hello, Debbie. Um, oh, she's been enjoying bag making. Oh, lovely. Oh, she's got the Builder Bag Satchel book and has learned a lot from it. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. She's got a question as well. Um, she bought some PU fabric. Do you need to use a freezable fleece? Depends what you're making. Um, the PU is, it, it will still flop because it's so soft. Personally, I would use a fusible fleece, but don't iron it from the top um, because you'll melt the PU. You can, I did demonstrate this in one of the shows actually, just put the iron up and down really quickly on the fleece on the back of your fabric. So PU side down, knitted side up, fusible fleece, uh, glue side down and then test it first because if it's too hot it will melt and then just do that with the iron Otherwise, I would still use a fusible fleece, but not fuse it use a basting spray So either you June Taylor quilting spray or your 505 spray But yes, I would use something with it if it's if it's a bag definitely use something with it Because otherwise you'll have a floppy bag So just top stitch down the edge. These are the tab bits so all I've done here is the square, so it doesn't matter which way around. Fold to the centre, fold to the centre, just like I was making bias binding. Fold in half, got glue on there, that'll wipe off. And then sew down the edges. I'd press that before I sewed it normally, but I'm aware that we're running out of time again. Oh, sorry, was that Carol? Oh, Carol with an E. Hi, Carol with an E. She says, morning. 
we'll miss the first show. Well, never mind, it'll be on YouTube later on. <laughs> she says, I make cutting out look so easy. Done a bit of it. Oh, she hates doing it. I love doing it. <laughs> she says, in fact, you make everything look easy. That's, that's the point. See, if things are difficult, particularly a, a, a lot of my followers I know are brand new to sewing or people that have come back to sewing after taking a break for a while. If you make things look difficult or if it's a difficult, I mean, some projects are just difficult. It's not very encouraging for new people to get going. I, I like to do things that are achievable, but I like to do things that look really good as well. So even as a brand new sewer, to be able to make something um, like this, like one of the bags from the Builder Bag book, it gives you such a, a sense of satisfaction, doesn't it? That's my little tab that's going to go on there. No pins, another tab here, fold it over glue. And this is quite, doesn't matter about that. Um, it's quite a lot of fabric and it's folded over so it's fighting back. But it's still going on there, that goes in that way. Normally I would sew those but I'm gluing them so it doesn't matter. And then this one is the end bit that's going to go right sides together here. That can be trimmed down if it's too wide. The reason why you might need to do that is explained in the book as well. That goes there. Let's turn that over and do the same on this side. I'd normally sew slower than this. <laughs> I don't normally race through so many things. How do we do this? How do we do this? And we make some oven gloves and there's a zip and there's some applique and oh, we're done. Bye, see you next week. I'm going to sew straight across all of those pieces. Go a little bit slowly over the very thick fabric. Use a seam lifter if you have one to stop skip stitches. Hasn't skipped anything on this machine, that's impressive. Normally would do a little bit. Straight across this one. doesn't mind at all. Then these are going to be opened up like so and top stitch across here just to make it look nice. That's me going slow not the machine I was just a bit nervous about sewing over a zip and a tab and the fabric. I don't know why, because this little machine is coping with it all very well. This is the most affordable machine that we have for you on the channel as well, so it's quite impressive, isn't it, that it can cope with stuff like that. There. So that's the panel finished. That's the bit that now goes around the top of the bag. Um, that would be sewn with the lining and the outer part of the bag all kind of wrong sides together so you've got a raw edge around the outside you could do that on the inside if you prefer and then bias binding goes all the way around the edge but I just wanted to show you how useful that pen is because with all of this I didn't use a pen a pin at all for any of it no pins no clips it's all about the glue remember getting your refill included there as well. I'm waving this at you aren't I um, you're getting the refill included in there as well they're really really useful and I don't know if we've got any more refills on the website, but we do keep trying to get them in because we sell out of them so often. So that's why you need a pen. Um, and it's just £6.99. That's including a refill, so that is a really very good price. Look at the mess in here, honestly. I don't know who did this. John's with you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll leave it. <laughs> Sorry, John. Also, I know that's really noisy, isn't it? I'll do that later. Um, right, our rechargeable lamp has been very, very busy. First time you've seen this today on Sewing Street. So if you just joined us, we have a rechargeable lamp that can be a standard lamp. Um, because it's rechargeable, you can have this any way you like. You don't need to be restricted or, or tethered, if you like, to a, to a plug socket. You're free. You can go oh, anywhere that is convenient for you. Maybe you've got um, a loft conversion. You don't have all the sockets in the right place. Where are you doing your craft at the moment? Um, do, you want to, do you want to go and spend some time in the shed? Have you got a, have you got a she shed or a man shed? <laughs> I don't know what. 
I don't know why, it's just a shed, isn't it? Um, but that's one of the reasons why this is really useful. It may be in a motorhome or a caravan or somebody that, somewhere that you're travelling to. So it's useful by not being tied, um, but it's also important if you are, certainly if you're hand sewing or if you're um, a model maker or you're embroidering or you're doing some very close work, to help with to help relax your eyes when you're concentrating basically if you're using fluorescent lighting at the moment or, or even general light bulbs they can be really straining on the eye this is a daylight effect bulb which has the bonus you can change colors as well so you can get the perfect color match um, it has the bonus of having the magnifier in there as well we don't have very many of these left at all. Please, can you check out your baskets as soon as you can? Um, the magnifier I find really useful for threading needles, um, particularly things like betweens for um, the little quilting needles with a tiny little eye. Can't see a thing. Um, so that's useful. But if you're threading beads, if you're doing tiny crosswork, if you're if you're doing parchment crafting, if you're doing hard anger, where you have to be really precise and really accurate in very small areas and normally you're squinting or you're hunting for the magnifying glass, it's already built into here with the lights going around it as well. And it's just £73.99. We have had a shop around and we can't find it for less, so we've got a great price for you as well. And remember, it's not just a desk lamp. It, it comes with poles, so you can make it into the standard lamp. You could have this over the back of your the chair where you're reading maybe and you have a clamp so this can uh, kind of clamp onto a table so it's it, it makes that accessible forever for wherever you want it to be if this is going to be the lamp that you have shining at your sewing machine I was saying earlier on the the light on my sewing machine is really good but it's not as good as this so it illuminates the whole area not just the area that you're sewing on and um, that's really useful as well you can put it wherever you want it to be and again, £73.99, have a shop around it, but don't, in fact, I would buy and then shop around and just confirm that you've got a really good deal because we're, we're going to sell out of this. If not now within this show, then certainly later on. Obviously, we'll try and get some back again, but um, I think it's really useful. This is all metal as well. Normally plastic, aren't they? When we had a shop around, this is what we found. £82.96, pence, but that was a reduced price. It was £103 before. I oh, know. Not today on Sewing Street. It's a nice sturdy base as well. It's not, it's not a tip-up or anything, so it's nice and solid as well. But again, I know I'm bashing on, but please check out a few baskets because you're going to be missing out on this. There's quite a few of the youth that have these in their baskets and um, it's, it's going to go, so you're going to miss out there. Right, um, so John's with you tomorrow and this is what he's going to be bringing you. Um, so at 8 o'clock in the morning, if I remember rightly... He's got a Kew Gardens book launch, so all that's all embroidery, so we'll have embroidery threads and everything on there. Then on nine at 9 o'clock, we've got a Tula Pink Jelly Roll show with a Tula Pink Jelly Roll quilt. That'll be interesting, I should be watching that one. And then at 10 o'clock, we have um, more Tula Pink fabrics and quilting coming up then as well. So that'll be a really nice day with some really lovely quality fabrics as well. Um, so ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm just checking. Oh, hi, Karen. Had that book for Christmas. My books are fab, by the way. Um, you've made the one that you made the pattern is just perfect to use and never wears out. Thank you. Thank you for all of your messages. Um, remember, you can. Um, why not join the Sewing Street Fans Facebook page? Full of like minded people, and you can share your comments and pictures. And we have a, a dip in there occasionally as well. And even choose our favourite projects. That's at, when I say our, that's myself, Fix, and John um, as they make of the week. And you're going to get PMP free on your next order. Um, and of course, don't forget you can email the studio now as well, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. So send in your messages and your comments, and let's keep in touch. It's nice to be interactive like that, isn't it? Anything that, oh gosh, we've got all of that stuff, look. Have a look on the website, 
for rose gold scissors and for a hemline marker, uh, sorry, hemmer. And then we've got interfacing and we've got all oh, lots of pin cushions there. And we've got some heat and bond. We've got some fantastic storage for bobbins as well. Um, we've got another set of scissors. So there's probably two in stock there. We have H640 fusible fleece. We have a nice little rose gold pin cushion as well. And that's magnetic. So that will actually stick to anything metal, including that. We've got your early bird um, saving on glass head pins buy one get one half price if you've got a, a 45 millimeter rotary cutter we have a, a rotary cutter blade set we've got short pins for applique oh we've got a loop turner really useful loop turner or a rouleau turner and we have um, a little um, ironing board and pressing mat i shall see you next sunday morning bye what else have we got